we'll um, do the Irving Penn thing and deconstruct the scene and show all the behind the scenes, <laughs> like this lovely tripod. <laughs> um, most people will remember my dear friend Kevin Raber from the video that we did in Las Vegas. Oh, that was fun. It was fun. <laughs> Actually, and that was the first time we met, and we have, we've been on the phone a lot since. Kevin is my hero. One day when I grow up, oh, I want to be Kevin Raver. That's, that's You're never in a bad mood. You're like awesome to hang out with. Thank and, you, Ted. Uh, yeah, and you run a pretty awesome little website too. You know I'm what? Uh, you know, just having fun in life. Yeah, and you cost me twelve dollars a year. I bought your friendship. Twelve dollars a year? You spent it? It's great, great income. I, I don't know you how know. you make any money at twelve bucks a year. That's a dollar a month. We have a lot of subscribers, and uh, you know, could... operators are standing by. <laughs> yeah. but... You know, all the information is below, by the way, and <laughs> the link to our YouTube channel is below. How to get that in? <laughs> you, you can. So what I'm going to do with this video is I'm going to mix this in with I'm just kind of doing one general vlogish kind of thing to show people, and I've already kind of said this, of what can do or can do there's seems to be some discrepancies on how it's pronounced but <laughs> this sony event which is it's not about camera announcements this is an opportunity for sony to get people together whether that's press artisans collective and the general public which yep. i forgot to mention earlier um can come out to this and it's kind of a way i don't know how would you describe it? it's a way for sony to communicate what they're doing um there, there's educational stuff if you want to learn how to do astrophotography or there time some lapses good you know they have uh, social media youtube yep you know different they had, and they had some of the best uh you know uh, instagrammers and and youtubers up there giving advice on how to build the channels and and build their social media if you want to um, get better at what you do as a photographer or a filmmaker or whatever that is like this is a, a camp to, it literally yeah, it, is a camp to come do this you know it's the second one uh, I've been to, and I have to admire Sony because first off, this has got to cost them a fortune. And we should make it clear, as I made in all my videos so far. Sure. You know, Ted and I, you know, we're invited here. They paid our airfare and have put us up and fed us while we've been here. Uh, they asked us to do nothing, but they gave us a lot of people that we could interview and do some things with yep. in regards to, you know, getting stories. Yeah, there's and very little criteria. Actually, there's no criteria. No, they, they just don't like put any, anything on do us. Do something on it. Yeah. You so know, we decided to do these videos, and you write about it, or you know. And you've done a lot of videos out we here. We did a bunch too. Yeah, but there's there's no no obligation, mm -hmm. and um, there was no announcements. So, you know, last no. time there was product announcements, but what it was really interesting. There's two things I really like about this. First off, they got us together. Yeah, and um, they told the Sony story, which is funny. All this time, we, right. we've kind of been you know talking about how great the cameras are, but we didn't realize really how great the cameras are, and specifically. The key word innovation. Yes. And yes. There's one thing I got to give Sony credit for, and I'll give it credit to, uh, say, Fuji and Olympus and some others that have gone mirrorless. Is once you really learn how much mirrorless can, and using the sensor is to do everything, mm -hmm. uh, can affect your photography. You realize that it's also allowing us to take our photography further than we've ever taken it before. Absolutely, and no question. Everything works off the sensor. You get more focus points. Everything's working off of there. There's no mechanical uh, interruption. Um, there is an avi aviation interruption right now. <laughs> Just, <laughs> but it has nothing to do with the mirrorless camera. Oh, it's those new guys from that Amazon. Um, <laughs> Are they delivering uh, packages? DP Review Channel. They oh, yeah. said they got a helicopter. <laughs> I thought maybe they ordered something on Prime, yeah. Um, actually, you know, uh, uh, an awakening moment for me, and, and we both on our respective platforms have talked a lot about, well, all technologies, um, mirrorless, um, whether that's Sony or Fuji or whoever. But one thing that made the most sense to me, we kind of got schooled yesterday um, when we had a, a meeting and they were giving us sort of a, it was a chunk of a presentation that they had done to a larger group, but it was explaining the benefits of mirrorless for back of a letter, lack, back, lack of better words, day. try that. Thank you. Lack of a better term. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the, I've done five interviews, sorry, today. This is I'm a little six. fried too. I know, I know. It's but tired. beer time's coming. Yes. <laughs> Just a minute. So anyway, but the thing for me is they said, okay, well, the advantage of mirrorless, and I have always understood those things, but they really went into depth and they said, okay, with a, an SLR, traditional DSLR, the sensor is active only at the point of capture. Right. So you're using a mirror for all the, and that's not what happens on a mirrorless. And then, you know, the advantage of a DSLR is power consumption is very low and battery life is very good. Um, and what Sony and other mirrorless companies are doing is, is what is possible to pull off the sensor just in terms of that entire experience. Oh, autofocus, here's the big one for autofocus. Sorry, I'm amped up on this. In a DSLR, because I never really understood this. Go, I knew Ted, go. It's a separate um, sensor that they're using yeah. to manage the autofocus. I didn't realize that it was a kilopixel. 
which is, and when he blew it up to like the size of two megapixels or whatever, it's tiny. There's no information that's really being collected, even yeah. with the autofocus. So this explains a lot with what you can do with the performance side. There's kind of a four-way wheel that we were talking about, but yeah, we should. Uh, I would like to try to make a a video on the explanation of the technology, the yeah. back uh, side illuminated sensors and what that means in regards yeah. to the way data flows through the sensor rather than mm -hmm. off to it. Uh, that's obviously something for a whole nother chapter, but this was only one part of what we saw at Kendo. There's um, lenses, there's more, yeah. I mean, it's, it, we, we got to learn about all the things that Sony's doing and the bottom line, which is amazing, is Sony's not only innovating the cameras, but they're trying to be what one of my heroes, Steve Jobs, was all about, mm -hmm. and change the world. And yeah. in a sense, at least the photography world. Yes. And one of the things that they've done really good is this, this event. Oh, Okay, not gosh, only you yeah. know they show us the stuff, but yeah. what they've done is they've taken their artisans, uh, and their collective, and yeah. their press, and they've kind of put us together like this. Mm -hmm. And we've had the opportunities to sit with them, listen to them, not always agree with them, and uh, then they send us off and they bring in and people that were paying money to come to the yeah. same uh, event, and, you know, the working photographer. And this is well worth paying tuition to come to. I mean, it, it, it's not a... The thing I want to communicate, it's not... Sony are doing it, and the amazing things. I can't name another equipment manufacturer that does something like this, where they put money into something that you're going to benefit from. There's no product announcements that are new on this. No. There's no new lens. There's no new A9, whatever. You know, it's an opportunity for you to get together and celebrate creativity. We've had some speakers that have kind of gone into yes. that. It's been it's been a lot of fun. You know, that's a lot of fun. But it also brings us together. Yes. I wouldn't have met Ted if it wasn't for uh, the Sony event in Las Vegas. I mean, I've known yeah. of them. We've known of each other, but you we never got. And recognized me, which was I was like I didn't recognize you. Well, because when I sometimes on whatever morning <laughs> I, I am not a very unrecognizable and forgettable person, aren't I? No, no, no. I'm teasing you. But uh, <laughs> you know, we 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 met each other, and of course we we meet, and there's you know a lot of other content providers out there that we yeah. get an opportunity to meet that are here, and we're kind of like a little family. Yes. And we poke fun at each other, and some of you guys out there might know who we poke fun at, but it's all in good taste and good jest and we all kind of like each other and we all learn from each other. <laughs> Kevin uh, Raber, luminous <laughs> nose. No, sorry, we can't leave that. No, we can't be mad. Yeah. <laughs> <He'll> be... <laughs> <laughs> we love you. Anyway, it's all, it, but th there was a lot of learning experience and what I'm taking away from this is um, some things in regards to where photographers are today and it's interesting. And we just uh, talked to Don Smith, who's a marvelous, uh, was a marvelous sports photographer, yes. transformed over to landscape. There's and some heavy hitters here. But what we were talking about it's is amazing. that we're missing, in a lot of cases, uh, with the younger generation, yeah. what photography is all about. They're not going to print. No. And well, no, the younger generation's not. And it's really interesting. I mean, they, they use these cameras and they, they shoot a picture of them, they come out of the camera, and they throw them right up on uh, the internet and they share them and it's like who can get there first but they're losing the art of photography and this is what you know you are the art of photography <laughs> and I think this is what the, the, the foresight to call the show that just so you could make that remark today is <laughs> it was <laughs> pretty clever <laughs> no, no, I, <laughs> we, uh, we couldn't have queued that one in better you're, you're, you have a good point though it's, and it's it's they're not doing some of the things because you and I are old school we got to learn you know with film and darkroom dodging burning and all the little things we did and then it's, of course with digital you know we were using raw processors and doing some of the same things and then you using some of the new tools that there is in the technology to really be able to take an image and make it our image. To take an image and have an intelligence behind it, have something to say with it, that, that it makes, I use, I, on my show I use the term work that matters all the time. And that's something I believe, work that matters and, and create something, put, put something in the, anyway, I'm just the I'm riffing on what you were saying. But the but bottom yeah. line is, you know, it's when you get that print at the end, you you've you've closed yeah, the the, you've the, created the loop. something yeah you and know, you, have an you just don't take it halfway around you know where any of us can just you know post pictures oh, we're guilty of it I've been throwing pictures up on Instagram the whole time because I learned how to be a better Instagrammer and I got like uh, two hundred. Uh, more followers okay, well, here's while we've tip. been here. You can't bash Instagram if you're going to be a bitter Instagrammer. No. <laughs> <laughs> you're bitter, a bitter Instagrammer. A, a bitter Instagrammer or a better That's Instagrammer? That's hashtag, yeah. hashtag bitter Instagrammer. Bitter Instagrammer. <laughs> Ted learns English. I am so tired. This has been like a long day. So, you know, it's... Um, it's a great time that way, but yes. I would really encourage the, the new generation of photographers to come up. Number one, you, you preserve your work by putting it on a piece of paper. 
Yes, and, absolutely. You, know, you, yeah. you, you actually it's an object. get a lot of satisfaction from that. Yeah. You hold so it. regardless, you know, throw your images up on Instagram, but take those images and you know, take them the next step and get out to print. That's the, the first bit of advice I have for the up-and-coming generation. Um, and it's just been a, a, a great time. Now, I think what we need to talk about a little bit, if you'd like to, is where we see this industry going in the next Before six months. Before we do months. that, I would add one thing to what well, you just thing? said. One yeah. thing. In terms of getting serious about your work, I think the other thing for me is what we're talking about. Get out and meet people. Meet your colleagues oh, yeah. and, and get to know people. Because there's people that just in the last couple of months I've become really good friends with, like Kevin, um, that I can call him when I'm frustrated about something. How do you deal with this? Or I have something cool to share with you or and vice versa. And we shoot emails or texts or whatever or give you a hard time. Which, or we, we, yeah. we argue the benefits, medium format versus uh, you know full frame and everything else. We, it's, we're nerds. Uh, I mean, there's nothing are, wrong with that. We're a little weird that way. Yeah, but, you know, it's all cool. But it's all part of what we, and most of you probably, really enjoy. I mean, yeah, you know, sure. Yeah. We all, we're, I keep saying... Oh, really? Who needs all the specs and everything? Go out and take a picture, and then I'm the first one on, you know, like a DP review or reading the specs. Go, ah, oh, look at this. Ah, oh, look uh, at that MTF yeah. chart. And then I just say, you know, I screw the MTF chart. Put a damn lens, the lens on the camera rocks. and go yeah, shoot. Go with shoot. It. Yeah. And if it works, it works. Yeah. And I'm also one that breaks the rules. And we had a discussion about this this morning uh, with Colby. Colby Brown, okay. and a uh, great photographer. Yes. And uh, we were joking about what's his favorite f-stop. You know, f-8! That's funny. But it, what, it yeah, is his favorite f-stop. Yeah, he has awesome. a favorite f-stop. But it's kind of a, a joke because nowadays, you know, we're, there are so many photographers that have these things ingrained that you should be shooting at a certain range. So if, if the length of the, the millimeter oh, length of the lens is this, then there should yes. be this, and, you know, you should do this. And Rules. they're sacrificing photographs sometimes as a result of it. Yeah. You know, rather than shoot at f22 because they've got a shot that requires depth of field, they'll give up the shot because they're going to break a rule and maybe have, mm. maybe have yeah. diffraction. Now, diffraction can be corrected in uh, Capture One, for example, and some other things. But why sacrifice the shot when you have the ability to take it? Like well. some guys won't shoot above 400 because it might get noisy or it might get grainy. Dudes, hey, man, you can go to 12,800 and get what we used to get at 400. Well, if you, if you think of the great Henri Cartier-Bresson, have you ever read anywhere somebody critique his diffraction problem? Oh, Nobody yes. cares. You're looking at work. I mean, is the image move you or not, you know? You know take, and, uh, take risks. Any purchaser pretty much has bought my photography. I have a shot I did in, uh, in Utah in Arches National Park. Mm -hmm. and I have this old tree and... This arch in the background, it's not there anymore. It's a one time shot, you know, because the tree's gone. I don't know what happened to it. The only way I could get it was the 28 millimeter at 22. I think even be 32. Okay. And it worked. Big tree, yeah. And, you know, people have been buying it, and there's a little bit of diffraction if you'd looked at some of the pebbles on the side in the corners. But you'd have to look. And, Those pedals ruin the picture. And nobody ever right. questions yeah, it. No. Nobody, I haven't had a client that comes up and goes, well, too must bad. have shot that at 22 because there's diffraction. <laughs> you stopped down pretty so far, didn't you, Raber? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, my, my favorite F stops 22. And yeah. JPEG and P don't have to do anything. <laughs> this is Jared's favorite shirt. Yeah, I know. <laughs> or you know, even our good friend Ken Rockwell. Yeah, you know, just shoot a JPEG at P. It'll all work out just fine. By the know? way, the JPEG shirt, it's funny because since I, since I had this done, it's like uh, people will critique. Well, it's ridiculous. You should really be I shoot raw, guess what? Yeah, we are. But... Anything, it, well, on the internet, it, it winds up as a JPEG, so, you know. Yeah, it's all, it's all a matter of things. It's just go out and shoot the pictures. And, yeah. um, you know, we're having some fun that way. But don't be afraid to break the rules. You know, don't be afraid to handhold it. Don't be afraid to raise the ISO. You know, remember, most of your cameras have image stabilization in them, which will allow you to do a lot of cool things. You know. Just, well, actually, I will share this with you, too. Um, I don't think I've told you this. So one of the interviews that I did was with Eli Reed, and it's and oh, he's, Eli, he's yeah, incredible, yeah. yeah. Um, the funny thing, and I, I, I will probably include the outtake when I when I put the actual <laughs> video up. Eli, is he was the first African-American photographer to work for Magnum in 82, I believe, and he has seen some heavy things all over the world. He's an incredible photographer. He's a nice guy, very charismatic. It was a great interview, and you guys have seen it. I can't wait to see it. When I got to the end, and, and the funny thing is, I tend to, because with the artist series, I prepare for these interviews, I try to be ask intelligent questions or steer them in a way. 
but I'll let them talk. But I got to the end, and, and this is this is one thing that, that I found it's easy to fault yourself on, but <laughs> you get to the end of an interview, and I kind of want, I envisioned this thing of like, you know, this, this great photographer, and, and I'm going to ask him something about the way he teaches, because he teaches at UT mm -hmm. in Austin. And uh, maybe there's something that he imparts on his students, this, this heavy, incredible mindset. And I said, so I know you're not teaching, like sitting there for a whole semester on shutter speeds and f-stops. So he says, well, he said, <laughs> I can see it coming. <laughs> we, we have automatic cameras for, or God invented, gave us automatic cameras for a reason. And then he lost his thought. <laughs> it was so brilliant. We both died laughing. Oh, but, God. Uh, but it's true. It's like, you know, you have to have something to say with a photograph and you've got to go beyond yeah. um, the technical limitations or you have to know those things, but then you think about them less and you say more. You I know? would say there's disciplines, but there's not really rules. And, no. you know, what that means is you have to have the knowledge of what happens, what the effects are of going to 22 or shooting wide open, and uh, understanding what the effects are of your camera when you raise the ISO or lower it. Mm -hmm. um, and when you get those things, then it's like a good musician. You know, he can you know, maneuver himself around a keyboard right. or the, the strings of a guitar or a violin because you're, you know everything about that and you're intimate with yeah, all the yeah. aspects of it yeah. that you, the art part comes in, I think and you're people, making conscious decisions. Do you think people misunderstand? Like, I, I, I did a bunch of composition <clears throat> videos a long time ago, and they're they're kind of like you know basic stuff like rule of odds, rule of thirds, uh, symmetry, you know, general imaging concepts. And because the rule of thirds is called the rule of thirds, um, a lot of people, some people, give me backlash on that. Well, I don't consider rules in photography. You know, it's not like a rule like your fourth grade teacher gave you. It's huh? just. This is why this works a certain way. It's not the it's, right solution in every case. It's kind of like but, the discipline, like I was saying. You know, right. I break as many rules as anybody else. You sure. know, there's like, don't put a triangle in a corner. You know, put it with the subject in that way. In some cases, that might be good advice. But you, you know when you, know? you look at a subject, you can balance it out. Part of what still has to come from your heart and your mind. Yep. You know, sometimes it, you have to be able to say, I understand all that, but this shot's not going to work because the way I'm feeling it. Yes. And this is some, my good friend, Steve Gosling. You know, he talks a lot about shooting from the heart, mm -hmm. you know, and feeling with the mind. Yeah. And if you do those two things, and, and almost every artist does, the results are tremendous because you're willing to break the rules when they need to be broken if you want to look at them as rules. But what you're doing is making something. His pictures will be out of focus, but there's some magic to what he does sure. by screwing around the way he does. Oh, things don't have to be in focus. Focus is sharpness is overrated. Who but, said that? You know, it's even it's off. <laughs> it's not off. It's off center. It doesn't match the you know the 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 one third marks. And there's a lot of things sometimes that are wrong. But you look at the image and go, oh my God, there's so much that's right. Someone speaks to you. Yeah. So you know, these are the things. It's good to know. It's like you know, learning how to write cursive and never really ever being able to write cursive. You know, understand how yeah. it's done. But you end up with your own style and your own way of, of, of the writing. Gesture, yeah. Yeah, so, and that's human. Yeah, it is. It's not a font. It's well, hand gesture hand. is a huge part of photography. Absolutely. You know, Jay Mizell talks a lot about form and, uh, and, Jay, you know, yeah. and gesture is one of the things that he emphasizes so often. You know, the movement of the hands, the, the shape of the body, oh, yeah. the, the, the bending of the tree, the curve of you the landscape. You see that all through his work. It, he's brilliant. Yeah, he's brilliant at it, yeah. And he's a great guy to sit down and speak with. Oh, my God. You hang I out mean, there's, we did a whole see, video on him. Kevin's a high roller. That's why. No, what. there's a whole video <laughs> where we go through his old his building. He's just an amazing guy. Check it out on our site. That's another reason to get your twelve dollars subscription. Twelve dollars a, a year, not yeah, a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a dollar. It's Actually, I am I am a luminous landscape member now myself. I know you are. Know. I, I, was, know. I was you notified of that. And I got yay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you track me in the stats? No, I don't does track he, you in the stats. Really read what I write. Yeah, yeah. Last time he signed on, I can see that. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, it was the other day. Uh, yeah, that's one thing that I think is a nice takeaway from this. Is this really has not been about? This has been about learning. It's been about and. You're never too old to learn something. I never stop learning. I never want to stop learning because that's not interesting to me anymore. And to do something like this where we can all come out and happens to be in a really nice location. Um, but we share experiences. Well, what's your experience with this camera? What's your experience with that? You know, how have you liked that lens? And, you know, do you find it doing what you want? You know, uh, it's, a, it's, it's fun. Absolutely, and, yeah. And what's more fun... More than that, you know. There's, there's been some videos lately about 
oh, burnout, people burning out. Yeah, and, sure. You know, I heard that on the Instagram channel. Yeah, I had to give up YouTube and Instagram for a while. I was mm. getting burnt out on it. You know, it was a full-time job. You know, when that happens, you switch gears. For me lately, <laughs> I've switched to 100 to 400 millimeter lens. That's a big gear switch. It's, well, it's, you know, it's not your 24 to 105. And what I'm learning and seeing by shooting with a longer lens is it's been an eye-opener. Yeah. I mean, it's... I'm it's looking, a, it looking is at, a different world. Like this, that, those, that tree branch there. Look at the way the sun's coming through that, right, yeah. right over there. Yeah. And you go shoot with a 400 millimeter lens into that, and you've come up with something really incredible. So, Like two years ago, I was in New York, and I had the opportunity. And I did a video on it. I'll link it in here. I met Ralph Gibson. And at the time, he brought cool. his Leica up, and we were talking, and he had a 135 on it. And he said Leica had given it to him to test, and he said, you know, nobody in their right mind would put a 135 on a rangefinder. And he said, but for him, it was a whole new world of, and a whole new vocabulary of composing an image at that, at that, that length that was really changing the way he was approaching right. photography. That's a really interesting thing to do. If you never shot wide, go, go throw an 18 millimeter on your camera and try it. And, well. and, and shoot on that for a month. And see what you finally discover. It's I, I tell people you know. sometimes in, in some of the workshops, you know what, we're only going to go out with a 35 lens today, or yeah. we're going to shoot everything at 200, or you know, with your long glass. So we don't want to pull any pull anything out else out. Go, but I got all these lenses. Yeah, and, yeah. It's a broad landscape. I go, no, no, no. If we want to do, we'll, we'll take that say, 200 millimeter and do a pan if you're or doing something. landscape yeah. workshops. I bet you're getting a lot of gear being schlepped. On. Oh yeah, yeah, it's amazing what we see. But you know, <laughs> we should stay on topic for our poor. I know, uh, I know. Yeah. Yeah, right. This video will be like an hour long. <laughs> we're cutting into our beer we're, time. We're 21. I know. I'm just saying. I got the beer to drink. Yeah. So uh, anyway, um, God, we could talk about so many things, but I think what we're going to see, and one of the things I wanted to touch on with you, and yeah. you know, get your opinion on too, is we're almost at the halfway mark. We're in May now, and oh, for the there, year, yeah, yeah, for the year. And there's been a lot of interesting things, but you know. If we're hearing what we're hearing properly with yes. Canon going mirrorless, Nikon being mirrorless by early next year. Is that the latest? Is that... And we might see something from Canon at Photokina, supposedly. I we bet might we see, see something, something from Nikon. It'd probably be under glass, but we'll see something. So, you know, these guys are beginning to take it seriously. And, you know, these there's going to be a lot of options opening up for a lot of photographers. And a lot of decisions they are going to have to be made. Yes. You know, is it worth the change? How am I going to make the change? If You know, is there going to be a new set of lenses, which many people are presuming there are, where the old lenses work with adapters? The things that yeah. certain photographers have to face this year are going to be pretty, pretty heavy. Absolutely. Regards of the hardware out there, uh, I know at least for me, I probably won't move off the Sony platform because I just know these guys have got a lot of other things up their sleeve. Um, but yeah. you know, we're going to see th another revolution. I also predict in the next few years we're going to see a couple other revolutions. I think we're going to move from 14-bit, which is the average for most cameras, mm -hmm. to a, a larger 16-bit, um, which means you know we're going to stay with the, the megapixel size, but the quality of the image coming off that megapixel size will change as a result of having you know, a 16-bit pixel depth, mm -hmm. uh, which is huge. Um, you know, we may see, uh, well, we're we already know we're going to see 100 megapixel in medium format, such as um, the Hasselblad X1D. 150. Well, 150 oh. on oh, oh. Uh, like a phase camera. Oh, sorry, Hasselblad's 50, yes. The X1D and the you know, GFX50 will turn into GFX100. Yep. I um, mean, you know, and these are 100 megapixel uh, back limited sensors too, if I'm if I'm correct, and I believe I I got that right. And, I think you are. And now that changes the whole equation. Um, you know, we're going to be seeing photographers with the ability to shoot really beautiful images with a lot of megapixels with fairly large pixels. Um, and you know, there's going to be another another step for us. Yeah. A lot of decisions out there for all the photographers that are trying to figure out: Do I need the megapixels? Do I not? Where Where's the right place? I for think me to another be? question is not just the megapixels. Do you need the bigger sensor because that allows your low light to change? I mean, there's there's all these are more videos. Not yeah, we'll have more fun we coming back to this <laughs> exactly because uh, a lot of this is presumptuous and. Special, yeah, speculation. Oh, sure, but there are. That is a big deal. Some people feel like resolution is important. Some people don't. But one benefit to going medium format is a larger sensor, therefore better low so, light performance. There's going to be an interesting years for cameras. I don't think we're going to see anything really new on the printing side. You know, I think no, Canon. Canon has their pro printers, and the Epson has their pro I would printer love lines to, out. But I don't know what it would be. You, you know? know, I am hearing, you know, rumblings that 
Epson is bringing back their Print Academy. And if you've ever experienced the Print Academy back in the early days, mm -hmm. that was an awful lot of fun. And it got a lot of people printing. And since we started yeah. off talking about prints, if that happens, I'm going to be 100% behind that. Because, yeah. you know, just to be I, able to offer that. people the ability to make prints and learn how to make good prints is going to be really remarkable. Well, so, and we're seeing a return to darkroom a little bit, too, because I've done some videos in Arizona yeah, with Hidden Light. Do yeah, and those guys, I mean... I don't know if it'll ever get out of like a boutique status of, and some people would say a hipster status, uh, but I love it. I love the tactile environment. I love the 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 variability and sorry the options that you have, <laughs> shooting digitally and printing in an analog environment like that. It's pretty interesting. So yeah, you know, back in my day, it's I, a wonderful time to be alive, <laughs> Kevin. <It's> just, <laughs> oh, you know, I was one of the first to take negatives, shoot. And do a hybrid digital, scan a negative, yeah. you know, work on a digital, and then, and then rewrite and rewrite a new negative. You're probably over a lot of that. A lot of oh. the guys that were around in those days are. Mine well, was like so much fun. I mean, it's still and, fun, Kevin. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not to a point where I'm. I'm not having fun yet. I want to take you to Arizona and introduce you to go this. Would you do I, that? Someday? I would That'd do that. would be a lot of fun. We yeah. could go printing. We'll go down and get some prints made. Are you? you I'm know, up for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it'd be fun to. To do that, I was going to say it'd be fun to be in the dark room with you, but people might take that the wrong way. But right now. to get, I, I <laughs> I'm going to ask your assistant. But we 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 actually run a we have an episode on our YouTube channel called On the Rocks, and although I'd like you all you to a series in your channel, yeah, called a series on the Rocks, on the Rocks yes. but which is quite good. We just filmed a, a, another episode before we left for this event. And we were looking at legacy cameras, and I was saying, "Oh God, wonder if anybody even remembers what it's like to, you know, get a Nikkor reel out and put film on oh, it." Oh yeah. And Jody, who's one of you know the other uh, stars on our little thing, mm -hmm. pulls out a bag and he has three reels and three rolls of oh, film. Get out, really? And I said, "Oh man, how are we going to cut it?" And he opens up a switchblade, and it's like so fun. <laughs> so the three of us, you know, cut ready, get set, go, and it was like pinch the film in there, and it's like if you've ever done it. It never leaves your, your. It's like riding a bike. Yeah, Once you, you learn you, how to do it. it uh, you, you got it right on the reel. Yeah. <clears throat> so it was so yeah, much fun to go back and, and you know look back at those old day kind yeah. of things and that's just you know go back in the dark room and let's do that. You know? I, I miss it. Yeah. I miss I miss having my hands. I miss parts of it. Um, so we could do it. We could do a fun time. I'll come to Arizona with you and we can do oh, it. And we, we you know we pick some of our images and then even do a print evaluation of it afterwards. Well, like you and I awesome. can critique it. That'd be so a blast. Not a bad place. Yeah. So God, we could go on and on. Thank you. This has been amazing. <laughs> We're at 30 minutes almost. I'm watching. Oh, you are? Are we around 30? Sorry, we've got Mike behind the scenes. Mike Durr. Mike is awesome. <laughs> and uh, I don't have an assistant, so Kevin will me his. <laughs> um, and uh, no, this has been a good time as always. And um, yeah, I'll send everybody over to Luma. L L L L Luminous. I am so Lake. tired. God. Come on, you got to get it right. Lula, I was trying to say. And well, we call it Lula, but it's luminous-landscape.com. Yes. And you can also just kind of uh, look for Luminous Landscape on YouTube because that's yeah. where we have a lot of good videos. On the, We have the history of Leica there, the story of Leica, and uh, some other cool Sh videos. Small, well, and I don't know if this is a request. A question for you. There's a lot of legacy content that you've been kind of repurposing, yeah. like um, Michael's article on MTF came yeah. out recently. Those are really good. Are you we have a we have a probably twenty five in the queue. Twenty five. Okay, good. Well, good. because what there is is there's things where I looked at it and said I should rewrite about this, and then I realized Michael already wrote about it. So yeah, I did pretty good uh, we, job. You know, I just kind of clean it up, refix new links or whatever on them, and we call it the Rediscover series. You know, it, it's keep them coming, keep, man. Well, it also keeps Michael's legacy alive because he did so much in the beginning when nobody knew this stuff. And he was to good. Put that yeah. stuff I, I I followed that site religiously back in those days. Um, uh, there was at one point until, until you took over. Yeah. The, <laughs> then you had to pay twelve dollars. I hear. No, I had nothing to do with that. It was just no, I'm teasing. <laughs> All right, is it time to drink? It's it's time, and you know, Ted as always. I, we got to do this more often, and yes. you know, it's I have a blast with you. And I, I, I do know, I know, it's so much fun. I do enjoy our talks and our, our instant messages. You know, and yeah. you're doing a great job with what you're doing. Thank you. Please keep it up, because thank you. You know, it's, you know, I'm just a young. It's funny. My idiot, wife comes you know? in and goes. Oh, that's Ted's face. And then she's in the other room, and, and Hugh, our, our good friend Hugh, goes, and I'm playing one of his videos. Is that that's, Hugh talking? It's Hugh Brownstone. <laughs> Is he talking again? Because Hugh's got this marvelous voice. I mean, he just, you, he you, does. you should He's, do voice should overs or something. Right now. He's amazing. So cool. So, so We'll link we, up everybody we're talking about. We've got great friends. And yeah. you know what? You're, I, I consider any one of you people out there watching us that are photographers that have a joy about this, you know, we're all in it together. And, you know, there's... 
it's all about sharing and anything yeah. we can do to help you uh, you know that's what we're here for it's what I'm Absolutely. always here for um, I've had a good career in photography but boy what really makes me happy now is uh, letting other photographers see what the joy of photography is all about yeah. and actually learn that if you buy a four thousand dollar camera you can probably save ten thousand dollars of therapy bills good point because for me that's my <laughs> therapy when sh shit hits the fan it's cheaper i just go out and take a picture and i feel a lot better i love it everybody thanks for watching ted thanks for letting me sit with you again thank you yeah absolutely. and here it comes i'll see you on the luminous landscape and the art of photography. That works for me. All right. Thank you, Kim. Appreciate it, man. All right, definitely.